First thing you want to do is you want to wash and rinse your beans real good. And I got my Instant Pot sitting here, and I'm just going to measure out about two, two and a half cups of uh, dry Great Northern beans. This is such a good pot of beans, and uh, I just, I love putting all these ingredients in here. I'm going to cut up, dice up a pretty good size onion, and it will look like a lot of onion, but once it, it cooks up, it's really not that much, and it just flavors those beans so well, and I like uh, a good flavored broth in my beans. Now, if you can't tolerate raw onion, you can put you uh, onion powder or onion flakes or something like that in there. If you're using onion powder, um, this size, you might put like a, a whole teaspoon of onion powder in there if you don't have a whole onion or you just don't want to use one. But they do cook down good. And I always put a bell pepper. And uh, this is the color I've got today. I've got red and orange and yellow. And uh, these are not from my garden yet. These are from the store. But uh, if I had my my preference, I'd rather have uh, the red bell pepper. I just think they taste the best. And then orange and yellow. And then even though I, I like a green bell pepper, and I'll use it in a lot of stuff, it's, it's my least favorite. But I do grow them, and I do uh, put them up, and I do use them. But the combination of the bell pepper... And onion, it just makes the beans taste so good. Um, I grow a lot of bell peppers and onions, and uh, I put them in the freezer. You can dehydrate them, but my I prefer to freeze them. And what I do is um, I just cut them up when I get them from the garden or even if I'm I'm out, you know, it's not garden season, and I and I I might buy a bunch up and put them up in the freezer, but I just uh, wash them good and I dice them up. I don't blanch them or anything. I just make sure they're good and dry, and dice them up, and I just put them in a gallon uh, Ziploc bag. And that's onions or bell peppers, or if you want to mix them up and put them in a bag together, and uh, I do that and. When I need some, I just open the bag up and reach in there and get a handful or whatever I need. And uh, I use a lot of onions and a lot of bell peppers. So we're not even going to saute them. We're just going to put them in our pot with our beans. We've got our beans and our onions and our bell peppers in there. And it's looking good. I'm going to put a good tablespoon of garlic, minced garlic, in there. Y'all know how I like my garlic. I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper and any other seasoning you want in there. I think I'm going to grab me some cumin here in a minute. I'm going to put, right now I'm going to put a quart of water. I may add... Uh, I'm going to add a quart and a cup because you can't get your, your Instant Pot too full of liquid. Okay, so we got everything in there except I'm going to put a teaspoon of cumin. Um, I put cumin in everything, and I don't want to forget that. You can leave it out if you don't like it. I think it tastes really good. And I've got two smoked ham hocks. If you don't have a ham hock, you can put you some bacon or ham or or uh, anything like that, smoked turkey leg, whatever you got. But I had two ham hocks. I'm going to put the lid on it. I'm going to push the manual button to pressure cook on high for 40 minutes. Now, I did not pre-soak these beans overnight, so if you pre-soaked them, it's only going to take half the time. Now, you can cook these on top of the stove, too, in a big pot. I would probably cook them anywhere from two to four hours. Okay, now that we've got our, our beans on, and uh, they should be done. Well, I've got them on 35 minutes, but it takes just a little while for them to come up and, and start cooking. 
So let's make us some cornbread. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make um, just a small pan of cornbread. Uh, anytime that I make cornbread for me, Mr. Brown, we can't eat all of it. So he might save some of it for cornbread and milk for later, but I usually end up putting some of it in the freezer. So I've got some in the freezer and I didn't take any out. So I just want to show y'all recipe for just a small pan of cornbread. Okay, while our beans are cooking, I thought we'd make us some cornbread. But today I'm doing something a little different. I've got two little skillets here, and they're about any they're about a six inch, um, six by five or something like that. This one is, and this one's just a regular uh, six inch little skillet. And I'm just gonna make enough cornbread for the two of us. And what you want is so I'm gonna put about I don't know a tablespoon of melted butter in my little skillet. I'm going to use this one over here. It's a, it's, I th I'm going to say it's a five and a half by six or five by six inch. And what I've got here is I've got a fourth plus one tablespoon of cornmeal. I've got uh, a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, and I've got a fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour. And here I've just got a little bit of sugar. Now you can leave the sugar out. I'm gonna put about just a tablespoon. And here I've got a fourth of a cup of buttermilk. You can use regular milk if you want to. And I'm gonna pour in two tablespoons of melted butter. I just I'm just gonna put it all in there. No sense <laughs> leaving a little butter. So, I'm just going to use one egg. If you want to, you can add some jalapenos to this. You can add some shredded cheese, uh, some green chilies, anything like that. I'm just going to leave mine just like it is. Now, Mr. Brown don't really care for sugar in his cornbread, but I put a little bit in there, and I think he's going to like it anyways. But uh, it's about that easy. That's a small batch. That'll feed two people, two good servings of slices of cornbread. Like I said, I've always got cornbread in the freezer and I always put it in there for making uh, chicken and dressing or something like that. Or if we just want some cornbread, I'll grab it out of the freezer and I'll thaw it out. But I wanted to show y'all a small batch of cornbread because there's a lot of people that just feed one or two at their house. So this is a good recipe for that. And the beans are smelling good. So we'll get this. I'm gonna put my skillet in a 400 degree oven and get it good and hot. Now I got my skillet out of the oven. My oven's at 400 and I'm just gonna put my, my cornbread in here, my cornbread batter. Get it in this hot skillet. You always want your skillet hot because that helps to crisp up the bottom of your cornbread. So we're going to cook it and it's um, it's probably going to take about 20 minutes for this size to get good and done in the middle. And we'll have us a good little pot, a little good little pan of cornbread going here. Just the right size. Okay, well, of course, my camera was not recording. So, anyways, our beans cooked for 40 minutes, and it done a natural release. And they're good and done. They're soft and tender, and that's the way I like them. And like I said, I didn't pre-soak them, but I cooked them, pressure cooked them on high for 40 minutes, and they turned out really good. Our cornbread looks good. It came out of the oven after 20 minutes. It's good and tender. And it's got everything's just got the house smelling so good. I hope y'all like these recipes. Um, the beans are just wonderful. The with all the different with all the onions and the peppers and all the different seasonings, it just it boosts that pot of beans up really good. So God bless everybody. We love y'all.